This video is going to be a little different. I'm out looking for elk today, but I'm not hunting them. I'm out looking for elk on their winter range. I'm just north of Yellowstone National Park, and every year a ton of elk migrate through these valleys. If you've ever seen elk on television or on nature documentaries, there's a good chance that that footage came from Yellowstone National Park. But what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the elk in Yellowstone migrate outside of the park during the winter. The snow gets deep and they have to head to their winter range. And some of those elk head north into the Madison, Gallatin, and Paradise Valleys. But in these valleys, the protections of the park are gone, and the elk have to navigate through a series of roads, fences, various houses, and development. Open space and habitat are lost that are critical to wintering wildlife. It makes navigating the landscape very difficult. However, there is some very good habitat left in all of these valleys. And some of that habitat was purchased by Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks with funding primarily from hunter dollars. Montana FWP was able to save these chunks of habitat and manage them for wildlife and habitat conservation. They call these properties wildlife management areas, and four of them particular in the valleys that I'm talking about are very important for wintering elk. Dome Mountain, Gallatin, Bear Creek, and Wall Creek WMAs all harbor a ton of wintering elk, and a lot of those elk come from Yellowstone National Park. They come from other places as well. There's tons of other mountains that they come from, but it's surprising how many elk come from Yellowstone and end up at these WMAs. I recently talked with Montana FWP's Julie Cunningham, Dean Walt T, and Fred King, and they gave me the rundown of all of these WMAs. All of these WMAs are open to public access and hunting during most of the year, but during the winter months, they're all closed down to protect the wintering wildlife. So the first stop is Dome Mountain Wildlife Management Area. Located in one of the main gateways into Yellowstone, the Paradise Valley. Elk migrate from the surrounding area and some of the best winter habitat is right here. The property is comprised mostly of these windswept ridges above Daly Lake, which serves as great habitat for wintering elk. FWP made the initial purchase in 1986 and a subsequent acquisition which was spearheaded by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation in 1988. Another recent 160 acre purchase helped to further connect the public land. So FWP is into this property for about $3 million. To help put in perspective how good of a deal that was, a few years back, the idea was floated to double the size of the property by purchasing the Dome Mountain Ranch. The asking price was $25 million. Unfortunately, that deal never happened. But for the roughly 4,800 acres that FWP does own, a significant portion of the elk migrating out of Yellowstone utilizes habitat every winter. Today, I can just see one group of elk way up high, but as a kid, I remember coming here and seeing an insane number of elk lining these ridges. Behind me now is the Gallatin Wildlife Management Area. If you're familiar with a place called Big Sky, we're right across the road from that. Elk migrate north out of Yellowstone, using this as a migration corridor, and it's also important winter range. There's a herd of elk right behind me on the hill, and there's also more scattered all throughout the foothills right here. This property is like a checkerboard moving all the way from the border of Yellowstone Park all the way up towards Big Sky. The biggest chunks of this property were bought in 1945 from Northern Pacific Railroad, and they bought it for a little over $10 an acre. Right now, if you want to go across the road, you can buy your 0.7 acre lot in Big Sky for $975,000. So it was a solid investment if you ask me. From 1950 to 1975, an additional 1,000 acres was added to this property through a series of purchases and donations. So this purchase was critical to block up this crazy checkerboard pattern of land have open space to get out of Yellowstone Park and be able to migrate to their winter grounds. In addition to the checkerboard land that FWP purchased, the Gallatin National Forest also purchased a huge series of land all throughout the Gallatin Range, but we'll save that for another video. So now I pop valleys and I'm standing in the Madison Valley. The Madison Valley is pretty incredible. Elk come from all over, including Yellowstone. They also come from the Gravelly Range, the Madison Range, the Henry's Lake Mountain Range, they come from the Gallatin Range, the Centennials, and the Snowcrest Mountain Range. It's a giant melting pot for all these different herds mixing in the valley floor. And there's several WMAs within the valley that are very important winter ranges for elk. Behind me is the Wall Creek WMA. It's about 7,000 acres of fantastic elk winter range. Recently I talked with Fred King, who managed this WMA for years, and I asked him, how did they know to choose this land for the elk? And he said FWP didn't choose the land, the elk chose it. Good point. Year after year, the elk came back to this exact area and used this winter range. So it was an obvious priority for land to conserve. So they bought the WMA starting in 1960, and it was a series of purchases until 1984. I think it was about $130 an acre. 
If you want to go buy a little ranchette just down the valley, you can do that right now for about $76,000 an acre. In addition to the original purchases, the size of the property was increased in 2014 when the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation and FWP purchased 630 acres and removed a house to further conserve the habitat. This property is just really cool. There's so many elk that winter here and it's nice to know that it won't be developed going into the future. So this is the Bear Creek WMA. It's about 3,500 acres of awesome winter range for elk, mule deer, antelope, and other wildlife that lives here in Montana. Right now I can see a big herd of elk up there. They're bedded in one of those draws. And you can also see tracks where bulls have been going up and bedding into the trees. So FWP bought this land in a series of purchases between 1956 and 1965, and it averaged about $29 an acre. If you want to go down the valley right over here, you can buy some lots for about $6,000 an acre right now. But speaking of lots, that's one of the cool things about this. There are no lots here. There's no silly little one acre ranchettes that are subdivided. It's giant tracts of open space. There's little ranch houses here and there, but it's open space. And it's not just WMA that provides that open space. Fish, Wildlife and Parks also holds conservation easements on an additional about 5,300 acres in the valley right close by. Montana Land Reliance and Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation hold even more conservation easements throughout the valley. So that ensures landowners are gonna keep their land as open space and conserve existing habitat, which is pretty cool. So that was just a quick rundown of four WMAs in Montana. In total, Montana has 68 WMAs. It's also important to note how important these areas are for other wildlife. Everything from songbirds to ground squirrels to reptiles benefit from this habitat being conserved. These lands were acquired through various purchases and donations, but largely the funding for them comes from hunting license sales, excise taxes on firearms and ammunition, and royalties on offshore drilling for oil and gas. In today's day and age, it's not a very popular idea to buy private land and convert it to public land, especially in these large tracts that we're talking about. So it's pretty incredible that this happened. So in my opinion, we owe a huge thanks to the people who had the foresight to protect these lands. As great of a success story as this is, there's always more conservation work to be done. These valleys will continue to be developed and habitat will be lost. In order to have programs like this continue, we need to have public support. Conservation does not happen on its own. Thanks for watching this video. I'm trying to do something a little different with this kind of mini doc YouTube style video. Uh, let me know if you're enjoying them and uh, if you have any ideas for future videos that we should use this style to create, um, any stories, any conservation issues or success stories, uh, drop them in the comments and give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. Uh, I really appreciate it and thanks for watching.